What's up, rock stars? It's Rox. <laughs> I know many of you guys want me to do the For the Dick Challenge, but I won't be doing it because, one, I'm tired of it. Two, the song is copyrighted, and if I play it on my YouTube channel, then I will get copyrighted flagged, and I won't get paid for this video. And although I love the rock stars to death, <laughs> a bitch need her coins. If I ever did choose to do the challenge, which I don't see myself doing because, like I said, it's been done and done and overdone, and most of them are not good, yeah, I won't be contributing to the for the dick for the pussy challenge i'm sorry i know many of you guys asked for it though but roxanne is not the one <laughs> anyway you guys this is just a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blogs let's get to it all right you guys so it's budget time i'm right in the middle of it i've been trying not to complain about it but it's stressful so i am not in the best mood today but we gonna get through it y'all First up, let's talk about Trump versus the NFL, Trump versus the NBA, uh, basically Trump versus uh, the sports world. So your president was speaking at a rally in Huntsville, okay, for Senator Luther Strange, and he attacked the NFL saying uh, that fans should walk out if they see any of their NFL players on the field kneeling when the national anthem is played, when the flag is being presented, okay, and that owners... Uh, should kick them sons of bitches out. They have no idea how highly regarded the owners would be if they just did something like that. If they took a stand that you will not tolerate, that it will not be tolerated that you disrespect the flag and the anthem. First of all, I don't even know why your president is even involved in anything like this. There were plenty of other things that he needed to be worried about at the time. And the top of that list was the hurricanes that was still ravaging. But um, he was just pinpoint focused on this one issue with the NFL. And um, it was obvious that he was trying to cater to his base, which he always does. Those are the only people that listen to his stupid ass fucking rhetoric. I, I just... You guys, I, I tell you, I can't. I can't. When this happened, it was a Saturday. So we know Sunday, football day, Monday, football day. What are the teams going to do? Well, those next days, everybody was watching as the football teams, some kneeled on one knee, some kneeled on both knees, some decided to stand locked arm with their teammates. Um, some didn't even show up on the field. Listen, I am not here to be judging how anybody decided to protest and how they handled it on that Sunday and Monday. My concern is what exactly is everybody protesting for? If you are protesting for the original reason why Colin Kaepernick even knelt on one knee to begin with, then this means that you are in solidarity and agreement with Kaepernick, meaning that something needs to be done for all these black people that are being attacked by police officers, many of them killed, and these police officers are going free. That is what the original reason why Colin Kaepernick kneeled, and that was the reason why all the fallout has happened since. So when you watch the game on Sunday and Monday, you just couldn't be clear exactly what these people were protesting. If you're protesting with Colin, then I'm all for it. If you're protesting the fact that your ego is upset with what your president said, then I'm not quite sure if, you know, I'm not, I'm not quite sure if you are understanding this whole big picture. First of all, the NFL owners were largely supportive of Donald Trump and his presidency campaign. So for them to have supported him, you know, either as teams or individually as coaches, I mean, um, owners, then that was sort of a slap in the face to them. Like, you are going to put us in this position where we have to be trying to make a choice when we did all that we did to make sure that you got into office. Okay, so that was their feelings. And so that's the only reason why they felt like now all of a sudden that they needed to kneel or lock arms or anything. Um, and then as far as the football players are concerned, yeah, I would imagine that many of the football players were afraid to kneel because they didn't want the same outcome that Colin Kaepernick got. I mean, let's 
just be frank and real. You know what? You get fired from your job at NFL. They don't have guaranteed money that comes to them. If they get fired and they have a family and a bunch of people that's relying on them, then many of them don't want to do that. I can totally understand that. So if you had these people who might have been afraid in the past and decided, you know what, I am going to go on and protest now because we're all doing it as a collective and fuck, they're not going to fire the whole team, then I can understand that. But I still felt like many of those football players that were kneeling still was not necessarily moving for Kaepernick. The whole reason that many of those football players were even kneeling is because they were upset with Donald Trump. And I just cannot be naive to the fact that many of those football players were not even supportive of Kaepernick and felt like he was making a mistake even doing so. You know, it's real frustrating this whole thing with the NFL, the NBA. We all know that, you know, he took back his invitation um, from the sacrament, I mean, uh, from the Warriors when Steph Curry said that he had no intentions of going to the White House after they won the championship game. So after he said that, then Donald Trump was like, coming to the White House is an honor. And because you said that, then now none of you guys can come. And, you know, everybody after that was just like, well, he had already said he didn't want to come anyway. So what you taking back, you know, but Donald Trump is so good at dividing our country and it's real frustrating and annoying to watch because his base is so fucking ignorant that I think they purposely try not to even understand anything else but why doesn't anybody see that this man is trying to just tear the, tear the country apart one by one okay I mean what bigger pastime does America have than sports so once you attack everybody on the political realm, and now we've got the, the racial realm, um, and, and, and now we're going to move it on over to the sports world. You know, one by one, he is picking off, figuring out ways that he can just create this larger and larger chasm between what some might say the left and the right, what others might say the black and the white. It, it is just... I just can't. I, I, I just don't. I don't have it in me today, you guys. I don't have it in me. As far as Ray Lewis and many of the other players that I mentioned who never were in support of Colin Kaepernick, but all of a sudden now deciding to kneel. Look, I did a whole bunch of research on that Ray Lewis. You guys know I don't know football. I don't watch football. I don't know football or anything. So I tried to do research on the whole Ray Lewis, uh, Shannon Sharp thing, what Ray Lewis said, and it is so fucking convoluted. You know, you got to really know who these people they are even talking about. You know, Biscotti should have signed so-and-so and this and that. Look, I, I don't know what all of that is. All I can tell you is when Ray Lewis talked about the fact that he could not support Colin Kaepernick because he had uncles and family members that was in the military and that they went out, put their lives on the line every day and possibly couldn't come home to their families that evening. And that was the reason why he could never support Colin Kaepernick. Um, he never would kneel um, because it's disrespectful to the military and the which is crazy to me because even when you talk to people that was in the actual military, many of them say, listen, I don't have any problem with what he's trying to do. Okay, has nothing to do with the military. I don't know why people in the military can understand that, but everybody who's outside of the military who has like this extreme patriotism um, to, the, to the point of fanaticism, I don't know why they can't see that. But anyway, he was talking about how he could never ever support Kaepernick he would never kneel and all of that yet and still when it comes to the time where everybody um, has their games on Sunday and Monday um, Ray Lewis in particular gets out there okay gets on both knees now all of a sudden everybody is just like oh but you said you didn't want you wouldn't do that okay well he backpedaled and pussy popped and said that um, yeah he got on his knees but he was praying and you know I just, I, I just, I, I just, I just cannot, okay? Shannon Sharp called him out and said that, um, I, I think that the, the general observation that I got of, of Ray Lewis, even as somebody who doesn't watch football, but just trying to read up and watch some videos of him talking, Ray Lewis kind of sees, I kind of see him as the front man for many of the owners and the, and the coaches um, that are white um, who 
can't really come out and say the things that they want to say, so they say it through Ray Lewis. Because the things that he was saying to Shannon Sharp on this interview, talking about it's not the it's not the owner's fight to you know worry about what happens in the black people's uh, communities, and black people need to fix themselves and not ask for anybody else to help them. And it's been going on for so long, you know, Colin Kaepernick, you need to get out and play the game and don't worry about everything else that's going on because it's been happening for years like it just makes you feel like Ray Lewis is kind of just the front coon for the the you know the hidden good old boys of the NFL owners and coaches and you know front offices and all of that that's just kind of what I got out of it I could be very much wrong but I just when I was watching the interviews and everything I was just like Ugh. And that's why I'm not even sure what these protests at the NFL teams, what what now? now so y'all done did this kneeling, right? Had your show of solidarity that Sunday and that Monday. What, are you guys going to do this every single week? Is the bigger discussion going to come out that it is not a black problem, but it's an American problem, which was what Shannon Sharp was trying to get Ray Lewis to understand, okay? And that everybody as a whole can do their part to try to change the injustices of the police departments and how they attack black people. I don't know what the NFL is going to do after this, okay? It just all seems like it's fallen Flat. And you know what is going to be even more annoying is Donald Trump is going to be on Twitter again Sunday and Monday with all this fucking dramatics about the damn game and how, you know, people haven't been watching and viewership has been low. Viewership has been low because a lot of people have been boycotting the NFL games. But you know what? Donald Trump is always going to find a way to twist the narrative around to his benefit. So now he's saying that people aren't watching because they're kneeling at the beginning of the games. Well, if that was the case, then they would just not watch the beginning and then tune in afterwards. So, I... I Y'all president has... He just... I tell you, I cannot with him. He is fucking crazy. And I just... I don't have the patience for it today. And I probably jumped all around and I'm hoping that I was able to get my point across. But we're going to see what happens with the NFL. You couldn't pay me to believe that those NFL owners care that much about the plight of the black person. I would have believed it had all this not happened and then they decided to take the stand. But it was all more about ego. It was all more about ego. And it's just going to quietly die away. And nothing else will be done. So, that's it, you guys. Y'all put y'all little 10 cents in on it. Put it down in the comments section below. And then, you guys, we have to talk about the hurricane. So, we know I have been talking about hurricanes for five fucking weeks now. Last week, I told you guys what was it? Hurricane Maria. Hurricane Maria came through Puerto Rico and completely demolished the fucking island. The Virgin Islands as well. They have no electricity. They have no food. They have no water. They have no cell service. It is a very destitute place over there right now. While your stupid ass president was going back and forth with the NFL, he seemed to have been ignoring what was going on in Puerto Rico. We know that Puerto Ricans are Americans as well, and you would expect the president to be concerned about the well-being of their fellow citizen, correct? Okay. Well, these people down there need aid. I was all set to get up here and go on a full rant on how fucking devilish and evil a spawn of a president that Donald Trump was because as of yesterday he had refused to lift the Jones Act which would have allowed aid to be brought into Puerto Rico at their ports but I did see this morning that he did waive that so I don't have to go into the rant and talk about how anybody who calls themselves a fucking president could ignore the needs of fellow U.S. citizens, especially by saying business practices, um, you know, they, they couldn't have boats go into the ports because uh, the Jones Act says that any boat that goes into Puerto Rico has to be owned and operated by U.S. personnel. It has to be an owned and operated United States vessel. So I was all ready to get up here and get, get to fussing because I'm thinking to myself, like, what person would cite 
white business practices over the fact that you got all these people over there that are fucking suffering, that are not eating, that are not drinking, that are so destitute and desperate that they are robbing each other and that they are looting and that it is unsafe. You have created an environment where people can't get to medicine. You have created an environment that is dangerous to everybody around. You can't call people savages and crazy when they have been stripped of everything and they are desperate for just even the smallest meager bit of something. You know, I just, I was ready to go off. But finally, there was some glimmer of hope that finally shined down on your stupid ass president and had him lift that Jones, they had him waive the Jones Act so that um, help could come in um, from even international you know, international waters. I'm thinking to myself, like, as much as the United States help other countries, okay, other nations, why would you turn down that help? How can you even talk about tariffs and acts and laws and rules when your fellow man is down there basically starving to fucking death? It takes an evil person to be like that. But like I said, your stupid ass president, he waived it. He temporarily waived it. And now, um, hopefully, these people can get the help that they need because I can't even imagine. I mean, you have people down there that are uh, terminally ill, that have cancer, that have, um, you know, maybe going to be having babies. I mean, just think of all the medical issues that could be happening down there because they, they don't have anything to... Uh, I can't talk about it no more, you guys. Hopefully, down there in Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, you know, they will be getting the help that they need. Can't imagine having family down there and just being completely consumed with their safety and me not being able to be there and help them because, you know, if we can't get there to help them, they can't get off the fucking place either. Okay, so they stuck and I have to rely on when your president just decides to open up the fucking waters and let people get in there and help them. Oh, I'm just, I cannot with this, you guys. I can't. Anyway, I, I'm re I'm done with the politics today. Let me get off of here. Get on to some more entertaining fool of fucking niggatry. First of all, let's say congratulations to Cardi B. Okay, she finally did hit... Uh, number one on the Billboard Hot 100s list. Remember, I told you guys last week that it was just a matter of when. She definitely was going to make it. People were streaming. And, uh, yeah, she finally did hit number one. She is only the second female artist to hit number one without any features on the Hot 100. Okay, the first person to do it was Lauryn Hill. And it was 19 years ago, not 23 years ago, like I said last week, and somebody had to correct Social media as a whole was very proud of Cardi B, including myself, because I've told you guys many a times of how much I've admired her um, struggle, the fact that she's worked hard to get where she is, yada, yada, yada. We didn't talk about it to death. And really, if I'm going to be truthful, I do really like Bodak Yellow, but I'm tired of the song and I'm glad that it's hit number one. So now I don't have to probably hear it as much. OK, but still, congrats to Cardi B because she deserved what she got. So while all you guys were congratulating her for what she did, okay, your favorite chicken sacrificer, Azalea Banks, decided to attack Cardi B. She namely called her a broke-ass Nicki Minaj, said that she is ghetto, she's illiterate, and insinuated that she did not write her own music. She even went on to talk about she's Dominican and how she wants to be white and a whole bunch of other stuff. Cardi B did clap back at Azalea Banks and post a video of Azalea dancing in a club to Bodak Yellow, knowing the words, seeming quite a fan of the song as she was dancing to it and really into it. Cardi B did put under the video the a caption that said, one of the reasons Bodak Yellow went number one is because even the haters love it. And of course, that pissed Azalea Banks off and we were off to the races. Azalea Banks had a whole lot to say about Cardi B. Cardi B finally didn't really respond to Azalea Banks anymore. However, her sister and one of her friends were uh, took over the reins, threatened Azalea Banks and said she's crazy. You know, Hennessy said that she was going to pray for her and all of that. It went on all night long. I just happened to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and I saw it and I picked up my phone and I saw it on Twitter and I was just like, oh my God, look at this. It was really sad. Listen. We have established long ago that Azalea Banks is not the tightest wrap burrito at Chipotle. Yet and still, 
Azalea Banks is entitled to her opinion like many others. There are a lot of people out there who don't like Cardi B's music. And that's fine. Nobody is saying that you have to love Cardi B or even like Cardi B. The problem that I had with Azalea Banks voicing this is that it just seemed awfully haterific. We have video of you enjoying the song at one point, but when the song makes it to number one, you wait until it hits number one, then to come out and say all that you had to say. I would have had more respect for what Azalea Banks had to say had she been saying it all along. But for you to wait until she comes and hits number one and is basking in the glow of her accomplishments, for you to come out and finally say all this shit about um, Cardi B, yeah, it, it just seems like you are very jealous because you haven't been able to achieve these heights. It's obviously not easy to do what Cardi B has done. Otherwise, other people will have done it. We've had two decades go by before it was ever done again. So, hate or love Cardi B, that is an accomplishment that requires quite a bit of praise. So when you hear, uh, you know, Azalea Banks going on and on and on about Cardi B, yeah, it just makes me feel like, well, this is just another one of those times where Azalea Banks is displaying her jealous, hateful, unlikable qualities and why she will never get bigger than what she is. She will never be known as this great rapper, which is what she would like to be known as, as this great artist, I should say, because she does shit like this. And if we know Azalea Banks, we know that sometime down the line, it might be weeks away, it might be months away, it may even be years away. She is going to come back out and she's going to apologize for what she said, saying that she should not have done that, that she was in a certain type of place. And Azalea Banks is crazy. The girl has mental issues. She has said it herself. So when I say it, it shouldn't be that much of a shock. I didn't think that Cardi B needed to respond to that anymore because... Azalea is known to go on and on and somebody finally did get a hold of Cardi B that's why I would say she has a good team she may initially say something but they know how to rail her back and say listen this is not what you want because it's not listen don't get started with this shit at the very beginning don't get wrapped up with Azalea Banks of all people don't do it so I'm just gonna say Cardi B girl just enjoy your success go on to make bigger and better songs good luck to your album that's coming out soon and everything else girl just dust it off your shoulder because honey it is gonna be a hater everywhere and we can't fight them all but good luck to cardi b congratulations to her i'm proud of her all right you guys so the daily mail put out this exclusive story um, saying that Wendy Williams' husband, Kevin, had been carrying on this affair, this double life with this woman by the name of Sharina Hudson of 10 years, like I said. Unbeknownst to his wife, Wendy Williams, they said that he had double residencies. He had one with Wendy Williams and that he had recently bought a home, a mansion for Sharina, um, some nine miles away from Wendy Williams' home. They're saying that Kevin is very much in love with this woman, that he recently bought her a huge engagement ring, um, and that they were even seen frolicking on the beaches of Barbados recently um, as they vacationed together. So when the story came out and everybody was just like, oh, what is this? Wendy Williams' husband is out there. One of the benefits of being with somebody for so many years is that you get to know them pretty much in and out. You know when they doing shit that they ain't got no business doing. You know when they lying to you. You know all of that. There is absolutely no way that Wendy Williams, being the person that she is, to me, I could not believe that Wendy Williams was not aware of the situation with Kevin and this Sharina Hudson. And I honestly didn't expect Wendy Williams to even address it. However, when she went on her show the next day after the story broke, she did talk about it. And she says, you know what, it's the craziest thing. There's a story going around saying that my husband is seeing somebody else. And you guys know that I'm a straight shooter. Okay, shoot from the hip pow pow if there was anything going on you know and then she holds up her finger like this and she shows her ring okay and she was just like <laughs> I, you know I would say you know all I'm gonna say is I love my husband I stand by my guy and she went on and on about that never did she deny that this relationship was actually happening she just went on to hold up her finger as if to say that even if the nigga is doing all of that he's coming home to this one here even that led me to believe that yeah Wendy Williams knows what's going on with Kevin they may have had an arrangement you know girls trip when you think about um, Regina's character and how you know her and her husband had this arrangement in public 
but in private she kind of allowed him to do whatever he had to do as long as it didn't come out and everybody would know about it so yeah i honestly i truly believe that this is what is going on with kevin and wendy williams okay as far as charlemagne Everybody is saying that Charlemagne was responsible for introducing this Sharina girl to Kevin because she's also from South Carolina like Charlemagne. And, you know, he knows there. As a matter of fact, there's pictures that seem pretty personal of them out um, at different places, even pictures of Charlemagne's father with this girl, Sharina. So I think it has been established that Charlemagne knows this girl. Okay. He says that he has not talked to her in probably around 10 years but he knows who she is um, and that she was a homegirl at one time that doesn't necessarily mean that Charlemagne introduced this girl Sharina to Kevin but if they were all in the same circle and all same friends that you know back in the day then why wouldn't Kevin maybe have known Sharina at the same time that Charlemagne knew her they say that even Wendy Williams knows this girl so for everybody to be all like you know Charlemagne knew and he you know he was really trying to stay out of it like I don't know nothing I would be the exact same way listen we sometimes know like I used to know about a friend of a friend whose husband was messing around and he was messing around with another friend that I also knew but these ain't none of my close damn friends I knew about the story but did nobody tell me directly and I did not see anybody do anything it was all stories that I heard but over the years I had knew what this husband was supposedly doing with this other friend okay but that ain't got nothing to do with me so if somebody was going to ever confront me about this other friend who's really not my friend she's a friend of his all these degrees of separation in there you guys but if that girl were ever to come to me and be like, did you know anything about it? I'd be, what, what am I supposed to say? Well, I didn't heard stories, but I ain't, you know, I didn't really know nothing about it for me to be trying to tell you anything. I would have backed off of that shit like Charlemagne did as well. It has nothing to do with whether or not he's afraid of Wendy Williams or Kevin. But it has more to do with, I'm not saying nothing. Because, yeah, I knew who she was and I might even knew they was fucking around or something. But I'm not getting involved in that because it has nothing to do with me. So, anyway, what do you guys think, though? Wendy Williams has talked about Kevin being a cheat in the past. And even before that, I can remember before the show came out, Kevin Hart. Um, Kevin, Hart. Kevin was involved in this huge scandal um, where he was harassing one of their employees and it was like a big big story back then that shit got pushed under the rug the girl got fired and they blackballed her and everything I don't remember the particulars in the story but I do remember that either he was trying to hit on her he was sexually harassing her and when she didn't come on with his advances then he started to be mean to her and um, it was a big huge mess okay so what y'all think do you think that Kevin was fooling around and do you think that when Wendy already knew or did it hit her as a shock as well? I don't think too much can shock Wendy these days, but you guys let me know what you think. So the Kardashian family, everybody is fucking pregnant. They say that Kylie um, Jenner is pregnant by um, uh, uh, Travis Scott, which is like, I don't know what the fascination is with Travis Scott with these fucking Zale the Monster swag type braids and just looking at him he looked dirty he looked like he stink but that's what people seem to like because wasn't he with rihanna at one point as well whatever child so kylie jenner supposedly is pregnant by travis scott okay a couple of days after we find out about that then we find out that chloe kardashian is supposedly pregnant by her um nba player boyfriend tristan thompson you know tristan is good at making babies evidently because he just had another baby with somebody else uh, that baby ain't even a year old yet and of course he is not even with that baby mama who just so happens to be the cousin to uh the, the, the rib look at all them people that's connected to that story but anyway getting back to chloe and tristan so supposedly chloe is pregnant and then we had an official friend supposedly confirm it Okay, he was Twitter verified and everything that's saying that Chloe is pregnant, you know, and congratulations to her and Tristan. We also know that uh, Kim Kardashian has a surrogate supposedly delivering, I believe, in either December or January. So allegedly we got all these damn Kardashian slash Jenner people that are pregnant, all right? But 
Kim Kardashian came out and said how annoying it was that even networks that they work with closely would put out false information or information that had not been confirmed yet, okay? Um, and so we imagine she was talking about both Chloe and Kylie. All right, just because the family has not confirmed it doesn't mean that it's not happening. And I honestly believe that they're pregnant and they're holding it because they're going to be having this, what, 10th uh, season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians coming up. They're going to have uh, Kylie Jenner's new season of her TV show. Um, and, you know, the Kardashians are good at holding on the information and saving it for the show so that everybody can watch. So that's what I believe is the situation here. But who knows? You guys, we'll find out as time goes along. I really could care less. Ty Kylie Jenner is, in my opinion, way too young to be having a baby. But she is a fucking millionaire and she definitely can afford it. And the baby will be well taken care of and everything. I just don't know why somebody at 20 years old would already be trying to bog down their life with a baby. Especially with this man who you haven't been with that long and who you aren't married to and probably will not get married to. And, you know, so, but I'm old school. I'm traditional. I realize that. I guess people don't fucking get married anymore. And then as far as Chloe is concerned, yes, her um, clock is ticking. So I understand the rush to try to get pregnant. Um, but again, she and Tristan are not even engaged. And, you know, here they go having these babies. So, child, I can't, I cannot, I cannot, okay? Kim is having this baby by surrogate with Kanye West, and Kanye West don't seem to be all the way there. Okay, let's talk about the fact that Kanye West has picked up all this weight. Um, there was pictures going around of him the other day, and in the pictures, he has this vacant look, and like I said, he has picked up a good little bit of weight. I and mean, people were going on and saying, oh, you know what, that's, you know, new baby uh, weight, and, you know, he's in love, and now he's healthy weight, and... If I was going to be 100% truthful to you guys, I thought Kanye West looked a mess. And it had nothing to do with the fact that he had picked up weight. I don't think that all heavy set men look a mess. My husband was big for years. And so when I look at Kanye West and I look at him in that light and knowing the Kanye West that he used to be, I can't imagine that he would just let himself be out like that and be okay with that. There is obviously something wrong there. Again, it's nothing to do with the fact that he's bigger, but it's the, it has a lot to do with the fact that he looked a sloppy mess. Okay, when you big and you got titties, you you need to, you know, big men need to take the steps necessary to not have their titties out. You put on a t-shirt, you fix that. But if you, to be just out so fully and have this sloppy look, and for you to have been Kanye West, who's this fashion designer, and who's this, you know, who calls himself this genius, and who has all of these things about you, um, for you to have let yourself go in that manner, hair not cut, overweight, titty showing, looking a mess. I'm sorry. I, there was no way that I could say that he looked good there. And you guys can argue with me if you want. But when I saw that picture, I was heartbroken for Kanye West because I know that that is not the Kanye West that we knew even before he met Kim Kardashian, even before he married her, when his mama was alive, okay? He wouldn't even have looked like that then. So y'all can trick yourself into thinking that, you know, Kanye West was, you know, that that was a good look for him, but I didn't see it that way. But you guys give me your opinions on everything. I mean, they're, they're pregnant. They're going to have the babies. Huh? You know, they're rich and everybody's baby's going to be fine. And, you know, they probably won't stay with these men. Okay. I'm wondering what's going to happen with Kim and Kanye. I've been a champion for their relationship and really want their marriage to work because they seem like they complimented each other well. But now I'm starting to wonder what exactly is even going to happen there. Um, we'll keep our eye on it, but uh, yeah, like I said, the Kardashians and the Jenners holding on to that information. Y'all will find out next season. You guys, and then lastly, in quickies, they say that Scrappy and Bambi are married. Okay, supposedly after getting back together after a very public um, and somewhat messy breakup. Um, a few months ago, Bambi had gone on with her life supposedly and was ignoring Scrappy to the highest level because if you can't act the way I need you to act, then we don't need to have any contact. Somewhere along the line, Scrappy realized that he was fucking up and that he really did want to be with her. He started this whole campaign to get back with her. He finally did get back with her. They got their relationship back on right away because this was just in August. I was surprised that they picked up so quickly and now they're saying that those two 
uh, recently snuck off and got married. If they did, congratulations to them. Okay, you guys know Rocky love, love. I want all motherfuckers to be in love. Okay, I hope that she knows what she's doing and she made the decision that she felt was best for her. But I also hope that uh, Scrappy is willing to grow up and be the man that he needs to be in that relationship because I honestly feel like Scrappy is not a bad person. I just feel like he is extremely childish. You cannot be a fucking child forever and it comes a time where you have got to grow up and do grow up things, okay? So if they're married and if it's legit and, you know, they seem to be happy, I just really hope that it lasts for the two of them. But congratulations to Scrappy and Bambi. Many years is hoped ahead for you. They said a young thug was arrested on felony drug charges. Okay, said that they pulled him over for extreme tent on his uh, 2016 Maybach. And when the police went through his car, they found um, several drugs, including marijuana, Xanax, codeine, and ecstasy, um, over $50,000 in um, cash, and they found guns. So um, the police felt like he had so many drugs that he probably had with some intent to um, distribute these drugs. They arrested him um, and there were two other people in the car with him. Everybody was arrested. They're already saying that Young Thug was released on bail yesterday and I guess he's going to be uh, facing some charges in uh, future court cases. But we'll see what happens if he can get out of that. If they pin that on the other niggas that was in the car or something. Something tells me Young Thug is going to be able to wiggle his way out of this one, too. They say that D-Wade is going to Cleveland, okay? He wrote this long farewell to Chicago. I, I don't know why these players now feel that they have to give these whole long speeches by, what you know, them leaving. Baby, just pick up and go, okay? You didn't do much for Chicago, so just you got to go where you got to go, okay? And now he's ending up at... Cleveland, I said that, I think they said that he's getting paid $2.3 million for a one-year contract there, somewhere around that amount, and um, him and LeBron will be trying to, um, you know, bring a ring to Cleveland. It won't happen, though, you guys, because the super team that is the Warriors, um, there's nobody out there right now that can beat them. The Warriors would have to be extremely unhealthy. And when I say extremely unhealthy, I mean all of them would have to be fucking sick for them to not be able to win a championship this coming year, the next following year. They've got some... It's, it's going to take a long time before we can break down that warrior super team. And yes, yeah, unfair, but shit, that's how it goes nowadays. LeBron and Dwayne Wade, no. Cleveland does not need a fucking 35-year-old guard, okay? They need somebody that's going to be quick on their toes, and, that's, and they, they just don't have that. So, um, it, it, you know. Y'all don't, y'all, I know y'all got a lot of LeBron James and Cleveland fans out there. Y'all might as well get yourself together. It ain't gonna happen. And what you gonna do next year when supposedly there's all this talk that LeBron might go to the Lakers? And if that happens, you guys are gonna fucking kill LeBron. <laughs> Ooh, they gonna be so through, child. But, um,. You know, there's whispers that LeBron is going to leave Cleveland, especially if they don't get a ring, and they're not going to get a ring. All right, so y'all need to get y'all mind prepared for that. It's going to be some bad times out there, y'all. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Woo, shit. Make a favor, try to uh, be slick shady and post on their Instagram. You know, we been had 40 shades um, from the lightest of lights to the darkest of darks in our collection. And without them saying, Rihanna ain't did nothing new. That's basically what they were saying. Okay. And uh, yes, Makeup Forever was one of those ones. Remember, I told you that there were some um, um, companies that did have a wide range. Makeup Forever was one of them. MAC has a wide range as well. Even Estee Lauder, Double Wear, they have a, a good range of colors as well. However, it's still the majority of companies don't. Um, but for them to say it kind of in a way like Rihanna ain't done nothing new, of course, the Navy came after them. Even Rihanna jumped in and said, okay, shit's still ashy. <laughs> and that, uh, you know, Makeup Forever was shook. Yeah, I believe all of the makeup companies are shook right now. Um, look, Rihanna's company is new. It's exciting. She still has a lot of shit to add to her line because, you know, right now it's all very um, basic and very just plain and clean face. Um, I know she's going to be introducing new colors. She's got some uh, Christmas palettes or holiday palettes coming in, you know, with other colors coming in. So nobody is saying that, you know, Rihanna has just completely taken over the makeup world. 
Um, but Rihanna definitely put her foot out there and made herself noticed immediately. So I think it was cool that she shook up the rest of these other makeup companies because the fact of the matter is not everybody is going to be able to wear Rihanna's makeup. I can't wear makeup forever. I love the color that they have for me, but I can't wear it. It breaks me out. And so everybody should have more colors so that there would be a larger um, pick for us to go if this one company doesn't work and we can go to the next, okay? So Makeup Forever didn't need to be slick shady like that. And uh, they had to learn the hard way that the navies come after motherfuckers real quick like. I think it's an exciting time for the makeup world. Maybe they finally will realize that black people got money and they want to spend it on makeup too. People are talking about Tamar stopping singing because she wants to concentrate on her marriage. I know that Vince being her manager or being highly involved in her career probably puts a very large strain on their relationship. So if you want to not sing and tend to your marriage and your family and your child and your husband, then you should do that. What I'm saying though is... Do you have to quit altogether? Can you take a break? Can you concentrate on what needs to be fixed over there? And once that feels like that is in place, then why can't you come back to singing? Why can't you get a new manager? Actually, I think she got a new manager, but I, I'm sure that Vince is still very much involved to the point where she feels like she just can't do it at all without him being in it. So I'm, that's why I'm just saying, like, take the break. And it could be some years. It could be some years down the line, okay? But take the break all that you need and fix what you got to do. But um, for you to completely shut off a God-given talent when it's obvious that you love to do something like this so, so much. Like if I was a person, my husband really wanted to do something. And every now and then it would cause some friction between he and I um, to the point where he felt like he would need to choose between he, what he loves to do and me. I would have a problem with that because somewhere down the line the regret is going to come out and with the regret comes the resentment okay that I chose you over what I really love to do and look I'm not happy I don't know if it's gonna be so simple as her just stopping singing and concentrating on her marriage but um, for now I can respect that she wants to work on her marriage and put this next album out I mean the last one didn't do all that well we're gonna see what this bluebird of happiness or whatever fuck it's called is gonna do um, but take the time that you need continue to work on your voice continue to work on your craft and come back stronger five six seven eight nine ten years down the line guys that said way longer than i expect it to be as usual let me get off of here we do this every single week make sure that you rate comment and subscribe and make sure you come back until next time rock stars bye